What up, good people, and welcome to another episode of This Is Dope. It's your man Ahmad here, bringing you some insight and impressions of things that I've found throughout the week that are just dope. Uh, today, I am doing a video on LumaFusion. Uh, they recently released, a, uh, I guess, an update to their existing software, 2.0. Yeah. I am not a professional, avid LumaFusion user. I actually am going to start using it now because of the features and functionality I've heard about it. Um, it's supposedly uh, really like the iPad or, or, or mobile version of Final Cut or Final Cut like. I don't think there's quite as many features, but um, it's something I'm going to use to start editing uh, my videos. I apologize for the quality of the last video. I recorded it in 4K30, but for whatever reason... I'm not able to upload it to, it didn't upload to YouTube with that same quality. So I use the regular standard YouTube uploader. So that's one of the things that's pretty cool about LumaFusion is that you're able to upload directly to YouTube from LumaFusion. I was using iMovie before to edit most of my videos. I'm a beginner. Uh, iMovie is the easiest for me. But I've been tinkering around with LumaFusion and really like some of the capabilities. And once I learn a little more, um, I think I'll really be, really be able to utilize it to improve the quality of the videos that I upload. So uh, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys uh, my initial beginner video editor uh, workflow with LumaFusion. Here goes. Well, here we are at the uh, initial interface in LumaFusion. Let's go ahead and dive right in. The initial pane that you will see is the, uh, I guess I call it your main window. That's where you're going to see, you know, be able to play your final project. That's where you're going to be able to see, you know, or, or interact with whatever video or photo that you currently have selected down here. Over here to the left, top left, is your, I guess, your sources window. Some of the sources are photos, your photos app, Narbox device, a Western digital device, the imported folder, story blocks, uh, titles, transitions, and iTunes. So far, I've only really played around with the photos and the imported and the story blocks. So... I'm, I'm pretty confident in how that works, at least for what it is that I'm doing. Now, interesting thing about the imported photo or folder, excuse me, is that over here, these sources will import media into the imported folder. So whatever's in the imported folder generally is made up of these sources unless you've opened a video or something and, and shared it to LumaFusion. That will also place that in that imported folder. So as you can see here down below, this is kind of where you do your editing. You really do your work, right? So right here you can see this. There's six tracks here. And you can kind of show these tools using this button right here, down in the bottom left. And with these particular icons, what they do, I only know what a couple of them do. I've only dug into a couple of them. This one is particularly handy, this lock. What it does is it locks that track. So if I've gotten this audio track the way, the exact way I wanted it to, trimmed it, uh, play with the volume, everything is perfect the way I want it. I should go ahead and lock it to prevent me from accidentally modifying that track. So that's what that lock does. Unlock it, it's free to edit again. Also, this particular button right here will mute the volume on an entire track. So it, it, it'll mute it for the entire duration of the track or mute the video audio for the entire duration of the video. It just depends, you know, it, it can be useful depending on what you're using it for. Another thing you'll notice, you see how there's a kind of an expanded view 
of each thing that's going on here, each of the different tracks. Well, that same view is up here as well, except you can, but tracks being so long, as you can see, my video track here is pretty long. I want to say I want to get to this particular break. Finding this breakdown here, I am scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. What I can do up here in the more condensed view, just go ahead and tap on it. Now I'm a lot closer to that break. And here's that break. I can insert a transition, do whatever it is I want to do. Or photos. If I want to get back to the beginning of the photo, say I'm already in in my uh you know in, in, in deep into the project and have a modification I want to make. Then here you go. This is what would happen. You kind of just skip back to the front and it'll put you in a place where you need to be. So this condensed view is really, really helpful, especially for larger projects. As you'll notice down below, there is a number of icons, right? There are a number of icons. These icons actually used to be comprised in a toolbox I heard in 1.7. I love the placement of these down below. It's easy access to your tools. So this particular button I showed you before will kind of display, close, and, and open those particular icons right there. This will go ahead and let you adjust the volume for each of the, each of the tracks right here instead of having to actually dig into it. This button will add a clip, voiceover, transition, uh, as I said, a blank clip, a main title, which is where the This Is Dope came from, or was it an overlay? Yeah, it was an overlay title, excuse me. Add an overlay title to your video. You can also add a main title at the beginning of your video if you'd like. Where you put these things, that really depends on the placement of your particular this line here, right? So here, if I wanted to put this here, or if I wanted to put something here, I could add, I would add another transition. Let's see here. Let's use this as an example. No, let's use that as an example. There we go. I want to add a transition here. And what I would do is select that there, place add, go transition, voila, placed it right in front, right where I told it to. And now there is a transition between the two. Obviously, this button here will undo that. Undo will undo really anything that you've done to the project within that session. Let's see. So, let's go back to the beginning. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's actually go back here. Let's here. So, these, you see these buttons here are all, all lit up. I, I don't know what every single one does. I'm just going to go over the ones that I know. I'm still digging. Once again, everyone, this is coming from a beginner perspective. This trash can obviously is the trash. If I decided I hated this clip, this I can go ahead and just click the trash and get rid of the clip. It'll go to trash can. If for whatever reason, I wanted to cut the clip here, split it in two. Scissors. Voila, we'll split it. I free to insert a picture here, um, transition, whatever it is I want to insert here, I could. As I stated earlier, this button will undo whatever it is you just did. So there is always a, you know, a, a, an error correction option within LumaFusion. This is your clipboard. I have yet to use this, but this will allow you to copy um, certain things and obviously paste certain things within your project. This, this will, this is for user effects and effects in general. This is from a, see, this is a project wide effect. I'm going to go back to the original. I, I don't want that selected. So what I'm going to need to do is that was an accident. I'm just going to do that. Do that. Uh oh, there we go. And we're back to normal. So this will allow me to edit this individual clip. So I can go ahead and place whatever color presets I want in this clip. I can, you know, do a, a number of things. There's color, there's, you know, LUTs, which I'm not too familiar with LUTs, but I'm learning. 
you know, there's blur, there's a number of things I could do for this particular, in this particular clip, you know, just based on highlighting it, uh, highlighting it and hitting this button. That's the edit button. The link button, I've never used it, not positively sure yet. As well as this one and this button as well. So these are something that I'm going to be digging into, hopefully providing an update on their functionality soon. These buttons over here are very, very helpful. I'll first start with this button. Once you finish your project and you are ready to share it with the world, click this button, share and export. For this particular one, I'm doing a video. I would do movie. And this will allow me to export it directly to YouTube if I like. Vimeo also, iCloud Drive, and all the other sources here, right? The the, the benefit of this is, and one of the reasons I really start digging into LumaFusion is, the last video I recorded in 4K30, great quality on my iPad. Um, when it got uploaded to YouTube, the watching it on YouTube, the quality is greatly degraded, right? Uh, how I've been, I'm not exactly sure what happened, but it was really disheartening. So my old workflow was creating the video in iMovie. It was a simple one, as I said before. I'm not a not a, a an expert um, videographer or editor of videos or anything along those lines. So I would go ahead and edit the movie or create the movie in iMovie, export it to my uh, to my Photos app, and then I would upload it using the YouTube app and for whatever reason, it uploaded it and the quality is terrible. So my hope is, is that, and from what I've heard, it, it should work this way, is that uploading it directly here will give me a, uh, many more options as far as quality and what I want to do as far as uploading, right? I click YouTube, it'll tell me, as you can see here, there's resolution, give you the frame rate, you know, video quality. I can select, you know, Extreme, I can ultra high. I mean, there's a lot of different things I can select in here. Uh, video codec, video audio, export info, yada, yada, yada. There's a lot of things that I can select in here. So that that is, you know, once you're ready, sorry, once you're ready to actually do it, you go ahead and click that button and it'll upload to YouTube. This here, this button here will help you adjust the layout of your workspace, as I mentioned earlier. I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. I can do this or that. It really just depends on how you're working, what you're comfortable with. This one here is the settings, the help and settings button. It shouldn't really be called settings and help because it would, thankfully most of the options are for settings. Setting, ducking, preferences, cleanup, and then last but not least, help. This is where you know, there's tutorial videos under here, a reference guide. I need to dig into these, but this is invaluable as well, right? And this last button here is your to be able to view your project. So I go ahead and click the button there. It has a project that I'm currently working on highlighted there. It's the only one there. I can go ahead if I want, click this plus button, this plus sign in the bottom left-hand corner here. And voila, name my project, select the uh, parameters I want to have for the, initially for the project, click plus, and then I'm in my new project and I can add media and do whatever I need to do. And then when I go back to project view, there it is. Now, if I decided, hey, I don't want to do this project or I want to just start all over, just highlight it, click the trash can, and you're done. Not sure what this button is. I'm just trying to experimenting now. Let's see. Ah, optimizing and solidity. You learn something new every day. I'm going to have to play with this feature a little bit later on. But, you know, there's a number of other options over here from the project view. You can kind of just play with those and, and see, you know, what is beneficial for you, what works best for you. These, but, these buttons here, this will tell you, you know, what the project is, 
you know, give you a little information about what's going on. This here, I'm not exactly sure why that's there, to be honest with you. Um, here's your selector. You can select everything by using the double check marks. Or I can just, I don't know how to unselect. Or I just use, let's see. Oh, I think this thing froze on me. Beta software, everyone. iPad OS 13 beta. I think it just froze on me. Well, I'll resolve those issues soon. That really was the um, was really the the video. I mean, the the my experience with this software so far. This really concludes this part of the video. I uh, have enjoyed learning what I've learned so far. It's a really powerful program. Um, I can't wait to learn more, which is only going to help the quality of my videos from a production standpoint. It, LumaFusion's done a great job with this product. They continue to improve it. Um, I've heard nothing but great things about it. There's a million YouTube videos on it. This is the closest thing to Final Cut that you will find on an iPad. The one caveat I will give is that if you're an iMovie or an Adobe Rush user, there definitely is a learning curve. If, you, if you're a beginner, there's a learning curve. Don't be intimidated, though. It's not brain surgery. It's just you need to kind of figure out what you're doing. As you can see, they unselected the, my, my, uh, my iPad. The bug worked itself out. And once again, that's a bug in my iPad, not in the software. I'm running iPad OS 13 beta 2, and I'll do another video on that later. But, um, but yeah, great software, great product, uh, really powerful, a lot of effects. Anyone who's like me who's attempting to uh, do most of their creation off of their iPad as far as, and, and iOS devices, as far as editing and uploading and really just having this iPad be the powerhouse it can be. LumaFusion is a must. I repeat, it is a must. Great piece of software. Hopefully, that was helpful to someone, if not everyone. Uh, that is my take on LumaFusion coming from the standpoint of a beginner. Uh, I've only really been diving into it the past couple of days. Um, I'm a traditional iMovie user, was using iMovie, um, decided to dive more into it because as stated earlier, my disappointment with the uh, degradation in quality between the video that I shot and the video that was uploaded in my iMovie to YouTube to internet workflow. So uh, as you can see, there's a lot of potential in the app. A lot of things that could potentially be done. Um, I suggest you definitely re do your research. There's a lot of tutorial videos out there on how to use different things in LumaFusion. A ton of YouTube videos out there. I actually came across a few um, before I decided to actually, you know, make the switch. Um, great product. Great, 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 great product. Uh, definitely excited about diving more into it and unlocking its full potential. Uh, with that being said, though, um, if you guys enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. If you are enjoying the channel, please, by all means, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a, as a subscriber. Um, if you, know, you want to be notified when I upload new content, new dopeness, then click that notification bell. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have any feedback or if you, once again, have anything else that you want me to review. Um, or if you have any LumaFusion tips, I am definitely open to learning more about this. If you're a LumaFusion master or ninja or something like that, definitely please leave a, leave a tip, a link to a tip, or just write out the tip. However you need to leave the tip, leave a tip below if, you, if you're so inclined. Um, because as I stated earlier, I'm definitely, definitely excited about learning more about this product. So any information and any help would be greatly appreciated. But with that being said, uh, that's it for today's episode. Thanks for uh, joining me again. And hopefully everyone has a great, 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 great day. I'm out.